And so we read in this book of Deuteronomy. You get a chance, as I told you uh, Thursday, and I'm closing now. Uh, go back and read the book. It'll bless you. And he tells us in the 11th chapter, he says, therefore, fact, look at 1022. Look at 1022. It, it makes it much clearer than I can make it. 1022. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with three score and ten persons. How many of them were there? Seventy people when they went into Egypt. And now the Lord thy God have made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. Look at somebody and tell them, God's trying to tell you, you better now. Yeah, you better now. 11 and 1 says, therefore, because you're better off now than you've ever been, thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. What's he want you to do? Love him. Love him. And then out of a heart of love, you're going to keep his commandments. Some people have it backwards. They think that if they keep the commandments, God will be pleased. But your God's pleasure in you is not in you doing. God's pleasure in you is in you being. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you are someone who loves God, then, then the doing as someone who serves God is almost automatic. Amen. Can I get a witness? Oh my. Lord, my intro, my intro now. My intro is taking too much time now. I gotta wrap this. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he's establishing, listen to me well, listen to me. What he's trying to do now is get them to think like a nation operate like a nation he's, he's, he's getting them to think listen, listen, they, they've been living out there in those tents, but, but, but God says I'm about to give you houses he said I'm going to cause you to dwell in houses you didn't build do I have anybody saying anything he says I'm going to cause you to live in houses you didn't build and and I'm going to cause you to drink from wells that you didn't dig. But if you keep on reading in Deuteronomy, he says, I'm going to also enable you to build some houses. So in other words, you're not just going to get it by inheritance. You're going to become a producer. Woe to the people, all of whose wealth came from inheritance. Because if all your wealth comes from inheritance, sometimes you don't appreciate it. But when you're not only a wealth inheritor, but a wealth producer, you know how to appreciate it on both ends. I'm going to teach that. You, 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 you watch. I'm, I'm going to teach that. I don't have time today. No time's gone. But, 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 but God, God began to teach them about how to lend properly. He began to teach them about managing interest. He began to teach them about how to have sanitation when they, as they live. He, he began to teach them how to have proper marriages and domestic relationships. Even though they're not in the promised land, he's training them for where they're going. They're still living a caterpillar life, but he's training them in butterfly school. Brother Ernest has the finance class over here uh, on Sunday morning. He's like, I ain't got no money. Ain't no use of me going to no finance class. See, that's pitiful talking. That's pitiful talking. What you need to understand is that although you in caterpillar status, you need a butterfly mindset. You need to go ahead and get ready for them. So God is trying to establish a culture. What is a culture? I'm, I'm almost done. This, this, is, this is the last fourth of it, okay? Here it is. What is a culture? Well, how do we de define a culture in our, in our proceedings last month up to the present? A culture is a lifestyle shared by a group of people that are connected in some significant way. A lifestyle shared by people who are connected to one another in some significant way is a culture. Now, the church, the body of Jesus Christ, because somebody would hasten and say, Brother Blue, this Deuteronomy stuff, isn't that the Old Testament? And we are New Testament people. We are the church of Jesus Christ. Why are you talking to us about Deuteronomy? I quoted it to you on Thursday, 15 and 4 of uh, Romans. What's it say? It says, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. 
that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Or in other words, my dear brothers and sisters, you need to study the Old Testament so that you can appreciate what God has provided under the New Testament. Not only that, but uh, we don't have time to go back to it today. But you may recall that in the 19th chapter of Exodus, I read in your hearing what God told his people. He said, if you'll obey me, I'm going to make you a nation, a kingdom of priests. His Old Testament people. He told them that in the book of Exodus chapter 19. And then in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, he told his New Testament people, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a, 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 a holy nation, a peculiar, a peculiar people. Peculiar does not mean weird. It means belonging to God only. Got it? And so listen, listen, even as he's establishing a nation in the Old Testament, there's another nation that he's establishing under the new covenant. But this nation is not like that nation in this sense. All of them were connected by means of Abraham's blood. We're not, we're not related by Abraham's blood necessarily, but we have a greater Abraham. And we're connected by his blood. In other words, they were connected by natural kinship. We're connected by being members of the body of Jesus Christ. I want you to look at this. The church is a culture that is transcendent, not limited by geography, ethnicity, or earthly socio-political factors. It is a unique culture. It is a super culture. I want you to get that word down in your spirit. I have not heard anybody else use it, and so I consider it a coinage. It is what God intended for the church to be. Not just world class or first class, but kingdom class. Superculture. Listen, number two, the church was to retain all the best of the Old Testament principles. It was understood that as Christ, uh, that as Jesus fulfilled the law, he did not nullify the law. He nullified the ceremonial practices, but he did not nullify the timeless principles. They would be applied now in the light of Christ. Jesus gave no indication that we the Gentile church and all the Jews in the church should stop reading the Old Testament. Point number three. I, man, I wish I had time. Each one of these needs its own time, its own day. The Old Testament meets the New Testament in producing a culture that would reflect God's heart continually. In other words, God raised up the nation of Israel that everybody who looked at them said, wow, what a nation. I mean, their children are well-mannered. They are highly educated. Their economy is off the charts. They are producing and exporting to all other nations. Everybody wants to emulate their arts and their music and their sculpture and their, and, and their, and their drawing and design, their architecture. That's the kind of nation that God intended for Israel to be. Well, do you know that's the kind of nation he intends for the church to be? Do you know that God intends for us to have a lifestyle that's so high that everybody wants to emulate what God is doing in our lives? I'm not talking about a denomination. I'm not talking about an organization. I'm talking about the body of Christ worldwide. Don't you remember when Daniel, he made Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ten times better than their peers. Do you know that people who walk with God are supposed to be ten times better in every profession, in every God Almighty, in every vocation, in every walk of life. If you belong to God, you're supposed to have the leading edge. Would you shake somebody's hand and tell them a relationship with God gives you the leading edge? Why does it give you the leading edge? Because you got everything that the other folk got out of the books, out of the universe out of the college but then on top of that you got the Holy Ghost praise the Lord so when you've gone as far as you can go with the books you've gone as far as you can go with technology you can tell excuse me a moment I need to go to the office and while you're in the office you cut into you talk tap you tap into your leading edge and say Holy Spirit this one is not in the book Holy Spirit this one is not on the internet Holy Spirit my professor didn't tell me this in college but I'm asking you to guide me wipe your face get your tears 
off your face, get yourself back together. Go back to the meeting. Tell them, say, I think I have the answer. Ah! And you come out and everybody said, that's it. That's what we're going to do. And then somebody catches you after, cl- after, after the meeting and says, where'd you go to school again? Where'd you go to university again? Hallelujah. And you can let them know it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. Say it for me. Y'all don't want to talk in here. Oh, it's all right to brag on your alma mater, but you know mater means mother. And what I just got the leading edge from, it didn't come from my alma mater. It came from my Abba Father. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. It came from the king. I feel like praising him, anybody? Shake somebody a hand and tell them if you've got the Holy Oh Lord, I gotta give you up. Tell them if you got the Holy Ghost, you got the leading edge. You didn't tell them with enough power. Tell them say if you've got the Spirit of God living inside you, it gives you the edge in every walk of life. If you are a school teacher, you need to be a school teacher with the Holy Ghost. Uh, Brother Marcus, where are you? If you're an attorney, you need to be an attorney with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Whatever the area is that God called you. 